Defusky Island, South Carolina. A remote island in the United States with a surface area of eight square miles, reachable by ferry only. Men, women and children were brought here from Africa. Their responsibility to work on plantations, growing indigo, rice and cotton, turning a profit for their owners. But all that changed in 1861, when the Civil War broke out largely over slavery, pitting states in the South against those in the North. Slaves fought in the war and eventually became free, with a promise to land and education when the conflict ended in 1865. More than 1,000 freed slaves settled here on Defusky Island, but only 13 descendants of slaves occupy the island today. They're struggling to uphold their rights to inherited land that is now prime real estate. This phenomenon began in the early 1980s, when landowners witnessed a spike in property taxes as resorts and golf courses took over, driving up land values. There must be a way that they could address people who have always had their land, no fault of their own, been impacted by development. Irvin Simmons, a fisherman and a social worker, still owns land on Defusky, but like so many others, lives elsewhere. The tide of planting, fishing, hunting, and wanted a better life. And there was a kind of migration to the north. But that wasn't the only reason for leaving. Younger people, as they went away to get educated, a lot of times they just never return. And one of the reasons you get an education is that you could do better, and the island didn't afford that to people. In Irvin's case, a chance meeting changed his life forever. While in fourth grade, attending the local elementary school, he met Dr. J. Herman Blake, a visiting professor. Irvin was intrigued by Dr. Blake's art of storytelling. I had this uh, little story I would use about balloons and what's inside and rising. He found himself thrilled by the story of the balloons that I told. Through the story, Dr. Blake tried to convey to the students the importance of an education, which would ultimately bring benefits in the future. Over the years, the two lost touch, but when Irvin graduated from high school and needed advice on advanced studies, he made a desperate attempt to find Dr. Blake. Months later, they reconnected at Oaks College, where Dr. Blake was the principal academic administrator. I was able to raise the money to bring him and two others to Oaks College full-time as students with uh, coverage of all of them living expenses as well as educational expenses as well as having money to make trips back home twice a year. Irvin's good fortune inspired him to give back to his community upon graduation. I feel uh, a sense of obligation to uh, do what I can to assist others. Especially people like Cleveland Bryan, who had moved to New York in search of employment. While there, he bought a piece of land on Defusky Island to use when he retired. But later, he encountered some issues. In 1985, some people buy, bought some properties about uh, eight acres. And right away, they put a quick towel chain on my property. Black people don't know about that. They can come put a quick towel chain on your property and they don't put it in the paper that you get, they put it in the paper that you don't get, and after six months, it belonged to them. Together with Dr. Blake, who is currently the executive director of the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor Commission, Irvin helps people to resolve land issues. The commission assists the descendants of slaves who settled in South Carolina, the Gullah, and those residing in Georgia, the Geechee, 
to retain precious land left by their ancestors and at the same time preserve their culture. To ensure the rights of people of African descent, such as the Gullah Geechee, are protected, their contributions recognized, and their rich cultural heritage preserved, the United Nations has declared an international decade for people of African descent. Launched in January 2015, the decade focuses on recognition, justice, and development for millions of people of African heritage. This report was produced by Mary Ferreira for the United Nations.